like to uh, congratulate the leading people on the on the research on antenna propagation in Europe, in the world. I'd like also to congratulate you all, delegates. Uh, I have to tell you that um, I am here, not like you, you most of you. I am here uh, not because I am an expert on antenna propagation, but because I represent a very important institution in Brazil, the Laboratory of Integration Testing, LEAD, of INTI, the Brazilian Institute for Space Research. To give you an idea of the importance of this lab, if you didn't have this lab, you couldn't have telecommunication regulation in the country because many of the um, facilities that we have there to test, um, to test telecommunication equipment and antenna are the only ones, so that brings capacity to that country. So that's why I am here. So forgive me beforehand if I cannot answer all your questions, but I have my colleagues here uh, who will be able to do that, okay, on my behalf. Uh, so I am uh, Jeyu, so I am um, the head of the Laboratory of Integration Testing. I will present to you the idea, just to present to you a little bit about So I, I talk, I'll talk to you about EP and LITI, uh, LITI boost of demand, LITI expansion, and research and development innovation activities on antenna in Brazil. So EP is under the Ministry of Science and Technology. This uh, picture shows you uh, the organization of space, the space organization in Brazil. So we have it under the Ministry of Defense, we have their space technology. Development Center. We have the Metrology National Institute under the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. We have the, uh, under the Ministry of Science and Technology the Brazil Space Agency and INPI, the Brazil Institute for Space Research. We have the uni universities under the Ministry of Education and ANATEL, which is the Telecommunication Agency under the Ministry of Communication. So here is INPI all over the country. Uh, so our headquarters is in is at uh, São José dos Campos in São Paulo State. But we also have important institutions in Cachoeira Paulista and Cuiabá. So here is how our organization, how it is organized. It has five major areas. One of one of is meteorology. Another one is remote sensing. Another one is, uh, is earth, earth sciences uh, for climate change, for example. Uh, another one is uh, space science. And another one is engineering. The laboratory of integration test is under the director and is part of the engineering effort of the institution. So here is the laboratory. It's a complex of uh, uh, a laboratory actually. So uh, originally it was this part here from the year 2000 onwards. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is, it, it, it grew towards this direction where we have an EMI MC test chamber. You can see here at the top our antenna measurement facility. And here's a transmitting, transmitting, uh, transmitting tower, eight meters far from this uh, semi-open and acquired chamber. Uh, so you see that uh, it's the best antenna field, antenna measurement uh, field in the country, the fast field measurement system. However, the city grew around that facility, 
and uh, we have problems. I will explain to you which ones. Okay. Um, uh, after after the year 2000, we grew new here uh, new EMI larger EMI testing facilities for larger satellites, and also uh, we improved our existing EMI EMC um, testing facility. This is all fields uh, uh, we work on. We work on, uh, you know, we integrate satellites there. So uh, at the beginning, we were able only to integrate up to 200 kilo satellite. Now we can go up 2,000 satellite, 2,000 kilo satellites, and we are moving towards 6,000 kilo satellites in the future to be able to test telecommunication satellites or radar. Uh, radar-based satellite in that uh, facility. Um, we have environmental testing there, uh, thermal vacuum testing, we have uh, uh, vibration testing, acoustics, uh, acoustic testing, and of course EMI and C testing, electromagnetic frequency testing. We have also uh, the uh, reliability, component reliability laboratory, all the electronic components, uh, components that fly on, uh, on satellites are, are being tested there. We have a uh, calibration facility. We, we were born very vertical. When we were born in the late, uh, the, the laboratory now is 28 years old. However, when we were born, we had no calibration facility in the country. So we had to have those facilities at the laboratory. Uh, also, contamination measurements as we, as we have clean rooms there, uh, thermo optical, thermo optical measurements, um, and also all the support area with data acquisition, maintenance and development, uh, information systems development, things like that. Here's a view of the experience of the lab. In terms of um, in terms of um, payloads, space payloads that were tested there. So we had the first Brazilian satellite launched in 19, 1993, although it was ready since 1989, waiting there at least to be launched. Uh, here is the are the first are the Brazil uh, Brazil site Brazil sat satellites developed by Hughes spacecraft in the US, so these two were, you know, developed, uh, were bought by Embratel uh, to use. Here's the first Argentinian satellite, the sat -B, that was tested at NIT. It, it didn't work, although we let them know beforehand, it worked, okay. Um, the SC2A was the first attempt of a Brazilian, a Brazilian launcher, so the launch the launcher failed, and so the satellite uh, was lost. So this is the second Brazilian satellite. Those two satellites were supposed to live for two years, and they are still alive. They are still providing the <coughs> these are the These are the Series 1, and uh, here is the second attempt to use a Brazilian launcher with SACI, with uh, scientific satellites and uh, it didn't work again, and the launcher failed, and uh, we have the Sibers-1 uh, satellite, the first satellite, the Sibers series, series, launched in 1999. Sibers is China, Brazil, Earth Reserve Satellite. Brazil and China have a joint development of satellites, and it's still uh, working, it's still going. Here's the second Argentinian satellite, sat -C. And it was successfully launched in, uh, in the, the 2000, the 2000. Here is a humid sensor for Brazil uh, on board of satellite Aqua from uh, NASA. Uh, here is SATEC, the third attempt of uh, having a Brazilian launcher. And we had a, another failure. But this time we had 21 people dead at the launch, at the launch center. The launching base, the launching base melted, 
with the, 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 the launch was held to the base and, uh, uh, and, uh, and every, everything melted and together with that uh, base we lost 21 technicians from space institutions in Brazil. So in this year we had the CBS2 satellite launch, CBS2B 2007. The SAT Diaparis is, um, is an Argentinian satellite, so it's a very complex satellite. It's, it's a 350 million dollar satellite. Uh, the platform is Argentinian, the payload is American by JPL. Uh, in the Silver Street satellite launched at the end of 2013, we had a failure of the Chinese launcher. And uh, last year, 2014, we had have, we have the Silver 4, the RSAT 1, the NanoSat CDR, uh, successfully launched. RSAT is the telecommunication satellite, the first Argentina, Argentina telecommunication satellite. It was also tested at LEED. Uh, you know, the, the, especially the vibration and the demo button tests. We had Sirius 4, now finally, um, finally uh, success, successfully launched. You see that we have one year to assemble and integrate this satellite, two-tone satellite that was very, a very uh, stressful time, a very hard time. It was, uh, we had our team, about 20 people, working in China to integrate that satellite in one year. He's a nanosat C, it's a CubeSat, and he's the AS, AESP-14, it's a satellite developed by ITA, the Aeronautics Technology, Technological Institute, but uh, the antenna were not deployed, so we didn't have communication with that satellite. So here is a, an overview of Niti, so Niti is the, here is the high bay, it's the, fun, the, fun, the environmental testing area. So here we have, we have vibration, we have thermal vacuum here of different sizes. We have uh, acoustic chamber here. Uh, we have the integration area here. You see very, uh, very short, it's not very tall here. The height is not enough for large satellites. We have all the calibration facilities and uh, component qualification facility here. And here we have the EMRMC <coughs> test chamber. It is a 16 times uh, 12 times 28 meter chamber. And we have the antenna measuring facility at the top of the building. So this, this gives you an overview of the facility as it is right now. So we are, we are expanding towards this direction with a, a, taller, a taller integration hall and also a antenna measurement facility, a compact range or a near field uh, antenna measurement facility here. So uh, I'll, I'll go through quickly some of with some features about the facilities. Here is the super satellite in the tunnel vacuum chamber. So it's a solar panel developed by the Brazilian industry being tested there at a smaller thermal vacuum chamber. Here's the acoustics tests of the of the uh, of this SAT D. It's the Argentinian satellite with the just the reflectors. Uh, here is the dynamic test also of SAT D, the Argentinian satellite, Argentina American satellite. This is our EMRMC chamber with uh, with sievers and also uh, an industrial test we have, have, have any here. You see the dimensions of the chamber: eight times eight times sixteen. One of them, the other one of them is twenty-eight, fifteen, twelve. This is the large one. So here, uh, frequency goes up to uh, forty gigahertz. 200 volts per meter. Here we have up to 100 volts per meter, per meter and 18 gigahertz maximum. So here is our antenna laboratory. Here is the size of the chamber. So this is the 
and can I measure facility in the country? And it's the best one, and it's the one that works for qualifying a commercial or the antennas that are developed by industrial companies or by academic institutions that want to become a commercial program. So it's a very key facility in the country. Here is a radioelectric model of the silver satellite being tested there. So now we go through, uh, we also serve uh, the industry in general, mainly automotive industry and uh, telecommunication industry, <coughs> medical hospital industry. Uh, so we have some examples of uh, automotive products being tested there. You see the antenna here. So here is for telecommunications test. So the, uh, for a product to be sold in the Brazilian market, they have to go through those tests over there. Functional testing. So we also test for defense, products, electromedical, as I mentioned, uh, dynamic tests for automobile and computers. So a climactic test as well. <laughs> So our industry demand, demand is growing. Uh, we increase every year with the number of uh, customers that we have. So we have, uh, this is the uh, number of uh, requests that we have every year. Uh, this is the number of antennas tested over there. So we have, so we have, um, 73% that uh, are being tested to see if they comply with the telecommunication agency regulations. We have antennas. We have private area 96, and uh, from the space area about 20 antennas. So here are the resolutions that uh, a product to be sold in Brazil. They have complied. Uh, with those resolutions, and uh, in the laboratory allows these products to be to exist, to be sold there. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about this expansion. Um, we had in the year uh, 2000, the end of uh, the year 2012, a a strategy written on science and technology innovation in the country that uh, stated that Brazil should be able to develop a telecommunication satellite industry. <coughs> yeah. So we have to start and we have to have um, um, facilities there that would allow us to do that. The first step was the SGDC satellite that was bought from Thales Alain um, to that is being bought, is being built. And it was bought from Thales Alain, but it's still being built. So the SGPC is not a satellite itself, it's the satellite, the geostationary satellite for defense and for communication. And um, it is it intends to implement the broadband plan, the Brazilian broadband plan, you know, to take uh, to the most remote areas in the country access to internet and wireless communication. And also, it could provide uh, the X-band for the military to communicate without, uh, you know, without depending on uh, foreign assets. So, uh, the SGDC then is a program. The first satellite is completely developed by uh, foreign, uh, completely, to be completely bought from a, a foreigner, can be from a foreign organization, and it will be because it's being developed by Thales Alain Space right now, <laughs> and uh, with the with a, a strong uh, transfer of technology and technology absorption program 
with people actually working there in France, you know, in France, mainly cutting tools to develop to help them develop that satellite there. But together with that, we have the, the program to uh, build um, to, for competence building in the country itself. And part of that is the expansion of the So we, we expect that uh, for the second satellite, the SGDC-2, will be assembled and integrated at least there in San Jose Stones. And we are expanding. We have already, we have already approved uh, an amount of uh, money, 15 million euros. And the, pro the whole project is about uh, 60 million, million euros. Uh, and uh, we have already received 15 of those. And that will allow us to build the chambers building, as I will show you what it means. Okay? So this is, this is what it's all about, the, this expansion. So uh, with that, we will be able to have 20% of the cost of the subject uh, already uh, uh, in our Brazilian, out the Brazilian uh, part of the satellite. So uh, it, the satellite costs about six, 600 uh, million dollars. So 20% of that is a lot. And uh, you, you, you keep that uh, in the country. So the, the challenges that we have is to build uh, greater satellites, uh, telecom satellites, and more than one uh, integration at a time in the same facility. So the telecom satellites are the ones that I mentioned to you. We'll start with the SGDC. We need greater satellites because our remote sensing satellites today is all based on optical and you know at the Amazon region we have uh, a lot of clouds so we need greater satellites actually to monitor uh, the Amazon region but we need facilities that can test the antennas of those satellites for example and we need uh, more than one integration at a time as we may have uh, defense requirements, we have, may have scientific requirements and also telecommunication requirements to be met in terms of space payloads. So the idea is that the, the capacity uh, needs to meet the future demand and challenge of space activity in Brazil. Uh, and also we would have limited disposition as reference facility in capacity in South America. I have put to know that there exists um, another uh, facility uh, in Argentina, a, a semi-integration testing facility in Bariwash and also Córdoba, but they are very dedicated to a type, to a platform, to a type of satellite. They are SAT platform, the Argentine Telecommunication Satellite. The DT is a much more uh, gen uh, general purpose, purpose uh, laboratory as we have uh, vibration shakers, for example, of different sizes, thermal vacuum chambers of different sizes, EMI MC chambers of different sizes. And we will also have in the future a near field <coughs> measurement systems of different sizes and also to go a compact range antenna measurement system. So what we need, we need large satellite AIT facilities as we need a 50 meter high 50 meter high uh, integration hall. The one that we have today is only 8 meter high. A uh, large vibration test facility with a 300, 300 kilonewton shaker. Today, the one that we have is 160 kilonewton shaker. A new antenna measurement system for antenna testing and also for satellite plus antenna testing. In instrumentation for operation and testing. <coughs> So here is the the chambers building, as you call it. Here you have a near field measurement system, a small EMI chamber, and also a compact range measurement 
system. We, are, we haven't decided yet if we are going for a compact range measuring system or a mutual measuring system. This is still object we study. Here is the, the, the new integration hall. Today we have the money to build the, this building here and also to have all the specification for the uh, measuring systems. <coughs> Here's another view. So here we have the integration hall, and here's the chambers building, as we call it. The integration building, chambers building. So you can see here. This is a compact brain with 10 measuring system, and also we have uh, some uh, near field measuring system here. As I mentioned to you, our our far field antenna measuring system today is uh, you know the, the town grew around it, and uh, we have some limitations for testing larger antennas there. So this would allow us to go up to. Three meters. This would allow us to go up to three meters, commercial antennas of up to three meters. And the, the CDTR would allow us to go up to six meters antenna diameter. Here are some to explain to you why we need a uh, lower integration hall. It's the way the satellite is integrated. You see? Here's the vibration. Vibration area, the new vibration system, the 124 newtons. And here's the new antenna measures. So you have the compact range antenna here. This is where we may have, a, it's likely that we have a compact range antenna measuring system with a scanner here, or a near field system. We are, uh, we have to decide uh, on that yet, and uh, we are up for, you know, for uh, asking your help on that. Um, here we have the, the near field antennas will be here and also in the basin of the room. So you can see the dimensions. So we have um, a smaller planar near field antenna measuring system uh, for especially mainly for small, smaller antennas, 1.5 meters, and uh, also for the commercial antennas, mainly. You see the frequency range? This is the demand that we have right now. And here you see the near field plus spherical near field. It's a larger, larger chamber, up to uh, 3 meters. So you, can, you can measure uh, antennas of uh, maximum diameter of 3 meters. These are based on the demand we already have in the country. Here you can see uh, compact range or planar near field. We have to decide that the other you can see the dimension of the chamber. Uh, by zone is that, so that will allow us to start to test an antenna of 5 meters and satellite of maximum dimension 6 meters of distance. And that will go up to 40 gigahertz. So here we have a comparison between uh, uh, compact range and planar near field. You can see uh, for the satellites, the SG, SGBC or SIBERS or SAR satellites, or New World for Resolution satellites, the, the tests that would uh, be done, how what facility would be used to test that. Uh, so this is part of the study that we are doing, we are undertaking to decide on the back range or planar uh, near field. So it's uh, again uh, continuation of that study now, considering uh, comparison between two solutions, near field and uh, far field and also compact range. So in conclusion, the, 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 the capacity that we have for full space product qualification in Brazil, for industrial product quality improvement, 
capacity for regulation, capacity for space in general needs to be developed in the country, and it's accredited by Brazilian international agencies. LITI is accredited by IMETRI, the Brazilian Metrology Institution. Now I will talk a little bit about the year, uh, research, development, innovation, and advanced. In Brazil, driven mainly by this uh, broadband plan, the national broadband plan, so the telecom industry in Brazil is uh, experienced a turning point. So we have a very uh, huge data traffic uh, increase every year. It accounts today for approximately 5% of national GDP and generates approximately 4, uh, 4, 470,000 jobs. So uh, we have some uh, factors that attract these activities. The use of local skills. Local skills is, a, is a, a good thing and also a bad thing because we need more skills there. Uh, the interest in the market, naturally. Uh, we have the local development cost, autonomy of the subsidiary in the country, the tax incentives. We have information technology law. We, we have what we call labor bank in the country, or, um, and also cooperation with research centers and universities. So we have challenges, the infrastructure in the country, tax burden, 46% of land revenue, and human resources that we need more in the time. So if you consider the uh, development cycle, uh, we work mainly here on the identification, detailed design, and uh, the unit test, the research test, the system test, and acceptance testing. So this is a field that we need to improve in the country in terms of further development. So uh, here, here we have the main uh, subjects in the industrial area, the, uh, the services for, for receiving antennas for the distribution service of television and audio signals by satellite, uh, the earth, earth station antennas operated with geo satellites, the KU and K antennas, and also we have the, uh, you know, the SGDC and the impact of that, the people are researching on that. So in terms of academy, I chose some important institutions in Brazil, they are not, not all, but the CEO uh, of the Catholic University in the country, we have the Center for uh, Research and Development for Telecommunication, we have the Technology, uh, Aeronautical Technology Institute, we have the uh, National Institute for Telecommunications in Mattel, and also we have the Polytechnic um, School at the University of São Paulo. So here are the main topics that are being researched right now, just to provide you an overview. So you see that it's very much driven by the, the broadband plan in the country. So you see the subjects that are driving these research. So here is the CPE, <coughs> not related to broadband wireless network, but applied to public security. Here you see some uh, technological institute of aeronautics research. I have a colleague here, Marcus, who is coming to present a paper on that uh, for you here. So this is mainly related to microstreet antennas and product built in antennas with built in the products. Uh, and here is the work that is going to be presented here. So the INATEL is much more uh, worried about the integration of antenna and parts of the communication system. So uh, they are very much worried about that and also uh, about uh, broadband uh, communication. And at EP, we have the antennas for the series, satellite and Amazonian satellite. So you can see the antennas that are being tested there. Not everything is developed by UP. Uh, uh, these antennas are also developed in partnership with Brazilian industries, space industry. So in conclusion, I talked to you about EP and DT, uh, about links, industrial demand, about its expansion and the uh, research development and uh, innovation in, in Brazil. I have to give you my last word that uh, without
this facility will be in, uh, in, bad, in very bad position in the country with, uh, with uh, less capacity or no capacity in terms of antenna development. We need to move towards, of course, more um, um, work together with uh, universities and research centers, having their, you know, when they, they, they uh, write a project to the, to the funding agencies, they remember that they have to test their antennas there so that they can become a product and be, uh, and be commercialized in the country and to become a real, a real product. That's the gap that needs to be filled in, in Brazil. So we have an academy, we have research institutions, but there is a gap to make those uh, researchers, research to become actual products. Thank you very much for your attention.